some improvements on the WASH units. Here are some highlights of improvements. Glide path information is available for most GPS approaches. The 5 Hz GPS update rate makes the GNS 500W series ARC view appear more fluid. The new processor allows for faster zooming and panning on the moving map page. WAS enabled units have the ability to provide guidance along curved flight paths to include procedure turns, holding patterns, and DME arcs with roll steering output to an autopilot. Terrain is shown at higher resolution. The improved weather data link interface provides more weather information products. There is an improved interface between 400W and 500W series units which allows the GPS unit to be used as the XM music controller. It will be beneficial for users transitioning from classic non-WAS GNS series units to the new WAS units to review the GNS 400W, 500W pilot's guide. There is also a new manual titled, What's New with the 400W, 500W series? Both manuals can be downloaded from the Garmin website, www.garmin.com. In addition to the manuals, you can also download the WAS GNS PC simulator from the Garmin website. Please review the trainer user guide for detailed operating instructions for the PC simulator. The approach enunciations are shown in the lower left corner of the display. Appropriate enunciations are shown for each type of approach, such as LNAV, LNAV plus V, and LPV. Review the pilot's guide for all of the enunciations provided by the WASH units. Here's one example of an operational difference between classic GNS units and WASH GNS units you should be aware of. In a typical scenario, air traffic control gives a heading assignment for vectors to final for an instrument approach. In this scenario, we will use a GPS runway 22 approach into McMinnville Municipal Airport at McMinnville, Oregon. Let's start with the aircraft located adjacent to the runway on the right downwind leg with an assigned heading for vectors to final. It will be necessary to program the GPS runway 22 approach by pressing the procedure key, selecting the approach with appropriate transition, and specify vectors to final. Once we have activated vectors to final, we notice the SUSP or Auto Suspend Annunciation above the OBS or Omni Bearing Selector key. Auto Suspend is active for vectors to final until the aircraft position has moved to the two side of the final approach fix and the aircraft ground track is within 45 degrees of the published inbound course line. At this point, the Auto Suspend Annunciation will automatically extinguish. It is important to understand that we do not need to press the OBS key to extinguish the auto suspend enunciation. Here is a scenario showing what happens when the OBS key is pressed while operating under vectors to final before crossing to the two side of the final approach fix. The classic TSO C129A GNS530 is shown on the left, and the WAS certified TSO C146A GNS530W is shown on the right. We begin with the aircraft on an assigned heading with vectors to final activated in the flight plan. As shown previously, the green auto suspend enunciation appears above the OBS key. If the OBS key is pressed, the GNS 530W will return to the auto sequencing mode and activate the nearest flight plan leg. This becomes a problem for the operator as ATC has issued instructions to intercept the final approach course prior to the final approach waypoint. The operator has now learned that the GNS 530W will need to be returned to the auto suspend mode. And having previous knowledge from the operation of the classic GNS units, the operator presses the OBS key again, expecting it to return the GNS 530W to the auto suspend mode. Pressing the OBS key a second time activates the OBS mode from the missed approach waypoint rather than the auto suspend mode. A green OBS enunciation will appear above the OBS key. The message enunciation will flash and the message approach not active is displayed in the message window. From this point forward, pressing the OBS key will either activate a direct course to the missed approach waypoint or activate the OBS mode 
referencing the missed approach waypoint. The correct method to reactivate vectors to final and reactivate the auto suspend mode is to press the procedure key and select activate vectors to final. The auto suspend enunciation will then reappear. To satisfy the requirements of TSO C146A, the auto suspend enunciation must be displayed when vectors to final have been activated for an approach. It is important to remember that when vectors to final have been activated, it is not necessary to press the OBS key. It is better to allow the WASG GNS unit to unsuspend automatically at the appropriate location. Here is another operational change made from the classic GNS units and the WASG GNS units. In this scenario, we will demonstrate how the WASG GNS unit can provide guidance through an approach hold and course reversal. In this scenario, we will continue to use the GPS Runway 22 approach into McMinnville, Oregon. The aircraft is positioned so that it is about to cross the initial approach fix to enter a holding pattern as a course reversal. Again, the classic TSO C129A GNS 530 is shown on the left, and the WAS TSO C146A GNS 530W is shown on the right. Prior to crossing the initial approach fix, the hold entry is displayed on the moving map. As the aircraft approaches the holding fix, the type of hold entry and entry instructions are displayed. When flying the classic GNS units, it would be necessary to put the autopilot into heading mode or hand fly the aircraft through the holding pattern. Roll steering guidance is now provided from the WASH GNS units, allowing the autopilot to fly holding patterns and procedure turns. As the aircraft crosses the holding fix, the auto suspend mode is enunciated above the OBS key in the classic GNS unit. The WASH GNS unit will not go into the auto suspend mode. The WASH GNS unit will show turn instructions to the next active leg of the approach. When joining the inbound approach course with the classic GNS units, the auto suspend enunciation will automatically extinguish. The GNS units will then provide guidance along the final approach course. Different from the classic GNS units, the WASH GNS units will not display the auto suspend enunciation. This allows the autopilot to navigate through all legs of the holding pattern, then sequence automatically to the next leg of the instrument approach. If the user wishes to continue holding instead of sequencing to the next leg of the approach, the OBS key can be pressed to reactivate the suspend mode. The message enunciation will flash, and the message Approach is not active will appear in the message window. The method for reactivating the suspend mode in the WASH GNS unit is identical to the method used in the classic GNS unit. Press the OBS key. The message enunciation will flash, and the message Approach is not active will appear in the message window. When flying the classic GNS units, it would be necessary to put the autopilot into heading mode or hand fly the aircraft when on the outbound leg of a holding pattern. With the classic GNS unit, each additional turn in the holding pattern will result in the unit auto sequencing to the next leg of the approach when joining the inbound course. The WASH GNS unit, however, will remain in suspend mode until the OBS key is pressed again. Once you are cleared for the approach, you must press the OBS key on the WASH GNS unit to cancel the suspend function and to activate the next leg of the approach.